All right, so last time I wrote down this ordinary differential equation on the board. Linear ordinary differential equation with constant coefficients. And I claim that even if you don't know what the solution exactly is, you should know what it looks like. You should know its general shape. And its general shape is u particular, any equation, any function that satisfies this equation, plus the null space. And right now, we don't have initial conditions. This equation, because it's second order, will require two initial conditions. So, so far, we don't have initial conditions because we're looking for the general solution. The general solution is an expression that captures all possible functions that satisfy this differential condition. So that's what we're after right now. And all of them have the form u particular, a particular solution, a particular solution. Most importantly, any particular solution of your choice, plus the null space. So where do you guys want to start? Do you want to start with a particular solution or the null space? Particular solution. We're going to guess it. We're in the, we're in the business of guessing solutions. In fact, finding the right form or having methods for finding the right form is not nearly as interesting as knowing what the shape of the solution is. So I'm not going to put too much emphasis on methods to discover the particular form. Actually, this is what I'm most interested in. The rest is kind of details. There are some important details, like the dimension, how many of what you need, and so forth. But it really is details compared to what we have on the board already. So let's take a guess. We have to plug in something into this derivative operator. Not derivative operator, differential operator. Complicated differential operator. It always helps to say it in words, because when you say it in words, you're giving yourself directions. It's actionable. Second derivative minus 6 times the first derivative plus a times itself. So we have to think of something such that if you take the second derivative of it, subtract 6 times the first derivative of it, and then add a times itself, you will have in the end 3 times e to the minus 5t. What would be your guess? What would you try first? Let's try e to the minus 5t, because it's the sort of thing that survives the derivative and still remains similar to itself? Could I even say that it's an eigenfunction of the derivative operator? Could I say that? Could, could I say it and be right? Yeah, I think so. Let's all think our way through it. What does it mean to be the eigenfunction of an operator? It means that when the operator acts upon the function, the result is that function itself multiplied by a number. That number would be called the eigenvalue, corresponding to the eigenfunction. So is it an eigen, is e to the minus 5t an eigenfunction of the derivative operator? Yes, it is. And the corresponding eigenvalue is minus 5, because the derivative of e to the minus 5t, the derivative of e to the minus 5t is minus 5 times e to the minus 5t. So when you were in your calculus class, you would look at this and say, that's a simple formula. Now you look at it, and you should think to yourself, that's an eigenvalue equation. So linear algebra completely changes what you think when you look at an equation. You should look at this and say, ooh. <laughs> uh, I'm seeing an eigenvalue equation. e to the minus 5t is an eigenfunction of the derivative operator, the eigenvalue being minus 5. Is it an eigenfunction of the second derivative operator? Yes. Yes. e to the minus 5t second derivative equals 25. e to the minus 5t. And what's the corresponding eigenvalue? 25. Okay, so that, I didn't say anything new. I just put it in linear algebra terms, and everybody feels a little bit better about it, I think. Because it's almost like you go somewhere where you've never been, and you meet someone you know. And it's the eigenvalue equation. It's the concept of eigenvalues and eigenfunctions, which is just so very important. Okay, so, that bodes well. 
It's a good guess because we'll get a multiple of e to the minus 5t from here. We'll get a multiple of e to the 5t from here. And we'll get a multiple of e to the 5t from here. Then we'll have some multiple. It probably won't be 3. But we'll make a scalar adjustment and we'll have it. So here's our guess. U, should I write sub p? U sub pg. Not my initials, particular guess. OK? Equals, well, that's our guess, e to the minus 5t. And then I'm going to plug it in. Why don't you do it along with me? What happens when you plug in e to the minus 5t into this operator? So I'll actually, I'll write it down, but then I'll do the simple arithmetic in my head. So e double prime of particular solution guess minus 6. plus 8 equals 25 plus 30. Holy moly, am I right? 25 plus 30, 55 plus 8, 63. 63? Not so bad. 63 e to the minus 5 t. And we need 3. So we're 21 times. That's not a problem. We'll just put an adjustment of 1 over 21. OK? So u particular equals 1 over 21 e to the minus 5 t. And that's all there is to it. Does everybody understand where 1 over 121 came from? Well, because when I take this and plug it into this operator, I will pick up a factor of 63, which will cancel 21. And so I'll have 3e to the minus 5t, and that's my correct target. OK, so we're half done. We have our particular solution. Now we have to talk about the null space. 